computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 15 seconds. 13. 11. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. We have both main engines start. 2. 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, building the station and our future in space. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. Roger roll, Atlantis. Atlantis into the roll, the external tank camera placing the shuttle in a heads down wing, wings level position for that eight and a half minute ride to orbit. The Florida Space Coast disappearing as uh, Atlantis moves into the correct azimuth for orbit. Thirty-three seconds into the flight. First condensation pouring over the top of the orbiter as the three liquid fuel main engines begin to throttle back in a three-step fashion to 72% of rated performance. Forty-nine seconds into the flight. Atlantis already two and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, throttling up. Atlantis, you are go and throttle up. Roger. The throttle up call from Capcom Ken Ham, acknowledged by Commander Jeff Ashby, joined on the flight deck by pilot Pam Milroy, flight engineer Sandy Magnus, and mission specialist Pierce Sellers, Dave Wolf, and Russian cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin seated down on the mid deck. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight. This view from long-range trackers at Playa Linda Beach, north of the Kennedy Space Center, and now the external tank camera view once again. Atlantis 11 and a half miles downrange, 17 miles in altitude, traveling 20 miles per hour. One minute, 40 into the flight, about 20 seconds prior to solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer reports a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. Atlantis is on board computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a precise target in space for main engine cutoff. Atlantis Houston, two engine tau. Atlantis Roger. That call from Capcom Ken Ham acknowledged by Commander Jeff Ashby indicating that if one engine should fail, Atlantis can make a transoceanic abort uh, to Zaragoza, Spain. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Two minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, 72 miles downrange, 47 miles in altitude, traveling almost 4,500 miles an hour. Atlantis flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, which are draining about a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large external fuel tank. Three minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis now 110 miles downrange, coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle will be too far downrange and too high an altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Atlantis, Houston, negative return. Atlantis, Roger. And that call up uh, confirming uh, that Atlantis uh, continues to head uphill. Capcom Ken Ham relaying that to Commander Jeff Ashby on board Atlantis. The orbiter and its six passengers on course and on time to reach the International Space Station on Wednesday. Atlantis now 176 miles downrange, all three main engines functioning perfectly, as are the three power-producing fuel cells and the three auxiliary power units, four and a half minutes into the flight.
the external tank camera was uh, smudged over by the propellant from the booster separation motors. We may not have a usable image for the remainder of the ascent. Press to ATO. That call up from Capcom Ken Ham indicating that we can make uh, minimal uh, abort to orbit targets, minimal orbital insertion targets in the event of an engine failure. However, at the uh, five minute, 12 second mark into the flight, all three main engines continue to function normally. We should be rolling uh, to the heads up position shortly, uh, enabling Atlantis to gain more favorable communications with the tracking and data relay satellite system shortly. Atlantis Houston, single engine, Ops 3. Atlantis Roger. Five minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Atlantis now 344 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, almost 70 miles in altitude. Atlantis Houston, single engine, Zaragoza 104, and press to Miko. Atlantis copy. As Atlantis rolls to its heads up position, uh, that call from Capcom Ken Ham indicating that we can make normal main engine cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Two minutes left in powered flight. Atlantis now 500 miles downrange, 66 miles in altitude, traveling at 12,000 miles an hour. Atlantis Houston, single engine press 104. Atlantis Roger. That call from Capcom Ken Ham indicating that if two main engines should fail, we can still reach minimal orbital targets. However, all three main engines continue to function by the book at the 7 minute 15 second mark into the flight. Seven and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis's main engines are once again being throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its six crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Atlantis currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles per second. Atlantis almost 700 miles downrange, everything looking very good for an on-time main engine cutoff about 45 seconds from now. Eight minutes, five seconds into the flight of Atlantis, 780 miles downrange, standing by for main engine cutoff, which will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Main engine cutoff confirmed by the booster officer here in Mission Control and normal ascent for Atlantis. And the booster officer reports a nominal separation of the external tank. Atlantis now moving away from its tank. We saw a nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. We saw L4D fail off, no action. Atlantis copy all, plus six complete. That call from Capcom Ken Ham indicating uh, the failure of one of the small reaction control system jets on Atlantis that has no impact. So uh, after an